All right, y'all. So this might be my last stop here in Charlotte, outside of Value Village. And I haven't. I don't think we have any Value Villages out in Arizona. I know we have a couple of Savers, and I know Value Village and Savers is usually like owned by the same people. But like I said, since I'm in Charlotte, I have no clue what I'll find. And the area might be a good area to source from. I know I try to go to more like affluent areas where they get some better donations. But like I said, you'll see what it is. So if you guys haven't already, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and without further ado, let's get into it. All right, y'all, so as soon as I walked in, I went straight to the front where they usually put some of the good stuff in the case. I know most thrift stores usually do that. And first thing I seen was that overpriced projector. So I passed on that and they had a couple older electronics, some older tablets and an older laptop. So also passed on that as well. Some of those things were like 25 and 15 bucks, but nothing too serious in any of the cases. Keep in mind, I got here right around three o'clock on a Saturday. So usually when I get to thrift stores that late within the day, it's usually a little too late. So definitely keep that in mind. Uh, they didn't have too many good games either. So I just passed on all of those and went to the shoe section, was trying to see if I can come up on anything, but they just had some, uh, in my opinion, I think the shoes were a little overpriced. Um, a lot of dirty ones here as well. Uh, this pair of Brooks running shoes, this would have been maybe a 30 or $40 shoe, but they were asking 18 bucks for that. So I definitely passed on those. Uh, drop a comment if you guys see anything that I probably passed on or, or missed. There were a few pairs of Merrells and some Solomon hiking shoes in there, but they were just a little too beat up for me. So I ended up passing on all of those. Uh, same thing with these New Balances. It's only certain models that I would even mess with. And for that, for 12 bucks, I definitely had to pass on those. But honestly, I do think probably during the week or just earlier within the day, uh, this thrift store had a lot of shoes. So I'm pretty sure they get some decent ones in here every once in a while. So definitely can't just completely write that off. So I definitely have to check out the Kirby accessories because I've sold some vacuum accessories in the past for a decent amount of profit. But some of those were in pretty rough shape. Then I seen this shoe shiner, but they were asking 25 bucks, and that's usually what they sell for retail, so I left that right there. And as you guys know, I sell a ton of keyboards, so at first I was thinking I might find some decent electronics since they priced the keyboard for so cheap. But just a quick spoiler, I didn't come up on anything too crazy in here. Um, one of the best items I think that I've seen in this whole thrift store was actually that vintage typewriter. I believe it was the IBM personal typewriter. And I briefly checked comps while I was in the store. And if this was in perfect working condition, somebody even got like 600 bucks for one of these, which was a very, very high comp. But these usually do sell for right around two, maybe 250 if it's working properly. But just based on the physical condition of that unit, I didn't even trust it. But honestly, for parts, you could probably still get maybe 50 to 60 bucks out of that for parts, probably even more if it at least turned on. I know some people would probably want to grab that up. So um, as you guys know, I sell a ton of electric, um, a ton of modems and routers. So I always try to look at those. Um, also a ton of vintage cameras as well. That's a $20 camera all day long. So I passed on that since they were asking like $8. But overall, um, not, t not too impressed with any of these thrift stores that I've been in in Charlotte. But like I told you guys in the previous video, Anytime I'm in thrift stores that's, you know, kind of dry and it's quite hard to find profitable items, I just always feel super blessed and fortunate because later on in the video, I'm going to head back to Arizona and you guys will see, you know, I, I find really good stuff all the time. So I'm back in one of my favorite spots, I'm back home in Arizona now, so I kind of just blended some of this video together for you guys. Uh, came up on some of these Wii um, accessories. I always need a sensor bar, so for $1.99, had to grab this one up. Then I came up on one of these Sony Handycams, and I love picking these up, especially for such a good price, only $5.99. These tend to bring in a decent amount of profit because if it's in really good working condition, you can fetch, you know, sometimes $100, $150 bucks for these. This one in particular, I couldn't find a charger for this one. So I'm probably just going to sell this one as is or just sell it for parts. So I'll end up probably getting closer to 50 or 60 bucks for this one. But honestly, I actually prefer selling some of these older camcorders that way because they usually always have some type of flaw. And it's very rare that I can get the full amount of profit for it. So for six bucks turning into 60, I'll grab that up all day long. Came up on another Canon camera, but this one, as you guys can see, uh, the lens it, the lens cover was definitely missing, probably fell off or something. So definitely going to have to pass on this camera. But if it was in better condition, I could probably get closer to 60 or 70 bucks for that. 
Um, I told you guys all the time, I try to pick up items that doesn't have that much, that many flaws and I can still sell it for a decent amount of profit. So for that reason, I ended up passing on that camera. And here was another one. I just knew it had to be another camera because this is a good camera bag. But this is one of those older Nikons. This is the D50. Um, any Anytime I find a camera with a manual and a lens and of course finding the charger as well those always add a decent amount of value to it you can sell it for a nice bundle and cameras in this condition i sell these just like this all the time with the bag included and the good thing is i already sold this one for 75 bucks plus shipping so definitely a really good find i was able to test it out and everything worked just fine so definitely glad with this pickup Next came up on a Sony Handycam charger, but this one wasn't the same charger for the camera that I found. But as usual, I always try to pick up some of these Sony chargers or just any random chargers that I tend to find because they usually come in handy either the next day or two months later. So for a dollar, I'm definitely going to have to grab this one up because it'll probably come in handy in the future. Uh, next came up on this St. Louis Cardinals jersey. Uh, this one was in really good condition. Didn't have too many stains. It was a couple of little minor stains on the bottom, but nothing that, you know, would affect the price too badly. And this one should get maybe 30 or 40 bucks for this jersey. I couldn't find any exact comps, but in this condition, I figured I might as well price it on the higher end and just wait for the right buyer to come along. Um, they're only asking five bucks for this one. So turning five into possibly 35 to 40 bucks is perfect profit, uh, perfect profit margins for me. Uh, next came up on this multiplication machine. They definitely don't make toys like this anymore. I remember having one of these when I was a kid. And I told you guys in a previous video, I'm expecting a daughter soon. So I'm definitely going to be grabbing that one up for her. And um, this was just like a networking ad adapter. Um, I usually always pick up some of these like Belkin and Netgear stuff, but that was only selling for 15 bucks. So I ended up passing on that one. And now we're back in Goodwill and came up on a pair of these cycling shoes and cycling shoes usually sell for a decent amount of profit for me. Uh, this brand in particular, in this condition, I probably should get somewhere between like 35 to $45 for these. Um, they were practically brand new without box. It just doesn't have the cleats on the bottom. Um, if it did, it would probably add some more value. But for five bucks, I had to take a chance on that. And this is a brand that I used to sell pretty often a couple years ago. Uh, Zanarobi, Zane Robe, whatever you want to call it. Um, I would have picked this one up for $17, but... It just had a couple minor flaws on here that were just a little too much for me. Um, it was missing the drawstring for the hood, and it seemed like it was some type of gum stain on the back of that hood right there. So ended up passing on this one based on just on condition. But, you know, Zane, Zane Robe, Zane Robe, um, still a decent brand. It usually does sell for a decent amount of profit. Um, but this was a jacket that I definitely had to pick up. Uh, this glover all duffel coat, as soon as I seen Made in England, it made me want to check it out a little more. And checking the comments on eBay, these coats sell for a ton of profit. Um, right now, since we're in the summertime, you know, some people would pass on this one, but I could still list this for 120 And in the fall and winter, I could, if it if it's not sold by then, by the fall, I'll probably increase the price to 150 because these jackets are bringing a ton of profit. So definitely be on the lookout for that brand. And here was another one of those camcorders, but this one definitely had some flaws. It was really just the battery that stood out to me. Um, as you guys can see, it, it, the battery was kind of separated. So I'm guessing this probably fell a couple times. And I usually would still take a chance on camcorders that are in pretty rough shape if it's selling for a ton of profit. And I'll just list it for parts and probably still get maybe 50 or 60 bucks. But this camera in particular, in this condition, without a battery, of course, um, was selling for like 50 or 60 dollars. So even if I sold it as parts, I probably would get 20 bucks at most. So I ended up just passing on this one. But that's just a little more insight when it comes to selling some of those older camcorders because personally I always think it's a gamble selling those and I just prefer selling them as parts. So decided to check out the clothing section before I ran out of here and came up on this pair of Under Armour Project Rock sweatpants and Project Rock is probably one of the few things I, only, I pick up from Under Armour either this or it's probably some Steph Curry shoes depending on the model but overall these were in really good condition did have some dust on them but nothing too serious with these um, it was a very simple pair of sweats so I ended up passing on them but usually project rock pants usually bring in a decent amount of profit I'm tight and now I'm off this shit. 
you wanna be a real one uh. Earn the bases hard, I still want Tired of wasting time, 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 time But you was on my mind Bear me from the music